All right, so here we have our next rhythm challenge. Okay, again, name the following rhythm and choose the best of these four option choices. So we have choice A, normal sinus rhythm, B, atrial fibrillation, C, junctional rhythm, D, idioventricular rhythm. Okay, so four different rhythms, let's choose the best one. So again, you have rhythm strips taken from the standard 12 lead ECG. Again, you have lead two and lead V1. Lead two and V1, best leads to Kind of look for any atrial abnormalities in the P wave. So lead two is a inferior limb lead at positive 60 degrees in the frontal plane. And then we have the uh, right precordial lead V1, okay? Giving us a short axis view of the heart. And then below here, we have enlarged portions of those same rhythm strips. So you can see those smaller boxes easier, okay? If you need any assistance with that. So let's look at these. So what I want you to do is pause the video, take a moment to go through it yourself. When you're ready, start the video and we'll go through these together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to uh, make up your mind and give your best shot here. So let's take a look at these. So the first choice here is normal sinus rhythm, okay? So things that we would want to see in the leads here that we have would be P waves, Okay, certainly. And you'd see upright P waves in lead two as the axis, the P wave axis and the electrical impulse head towards that lead at positive 60 degrees. And you'd wanna see biphasic P waves with an upright and then negative deflection. So in lead two, you'd want to see upright P waves. Okay, that's lead two. In V1, you want to see these biphasic P waves. Okay, that would be normal in those leads. Uh, and, and the other things you'd want to see uh, would be si similar morphology in those P waves, okay? And we'll see here that, in fact, there are no P waves present, okay? If you kind of look throughout and maybe you have a better idea down here, right, you can see that there's no clear P waves, okay? No clear P waves in both of these, all right? So no P waves. So what that should clue you into is that we're not dealing with a sinus rhythm. So sinus rhythm is not correct because we don't see those P waves here. Now of the other three choices, they actually don't have to have any P waves, all right? So one of the things we should look for in atrial fibrillation is, again, no P waves. You can have fibrillation or of those are flutter waves or, or fibrillatory waves, okay, seen here. Um, you can also see an AFib irregularly irregular rhythm, which we'll discuss, okay? All right, and then we can look at the rate that we'll get into, is it fast or slow? A normal AFib will be between 60 and 100 beats per minute, but that's not really a distinguishing factor that we'll need here, okay? Uh, in the next one, we look at junctional rhythm. Again, you don't need any P waves. You'll have a regular rhythm, okay? And our QRS complexes will be narrow QRS, okay, or normal duration, whereas in idioventricular rhythm, again, you don't need any P waves. This tends to be a regular rhythm, okay, and then these are wide QRS complexes, okay, at least um, greater than or equal to 120 milliseconds, where these would be less than 120 milliseconds, okay. All right, so hopefully that makes sense there. Okay, so let's look at this. So the first thing we're noticing is that we said that there's no P waves present, so it's not a sinus rhythm. Okay, so A's marked off. Next, we looked at the regularity. Okay, notice that choice C and D have regular rhythms. Well, if you look here, well, you can use our R waves, which are these ones here, the first positive deflection of our QRS complex. Okay, these are R waves. You can see them all throughout here. And what you'll notice, and one over here, is that if you measure these intervals, so from one to the other, we call that an R to R interval, okay? And then the next R to R interval would be this one here. And then we have one that follows to this R wave, okay? And then we have one, oops, a little too far, that one, and then this one here, okay? And then the one that follows. And what you would wanna do, if you measure these all out, you would see that there is no regularity, meaning that the duration of each one of them is not the same at all, okay? And that's what we call not only an irregular rhythm, but an irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? There's no regularity to it whatsoever. So already we can see that choices C and D are not correct, 
okay? So that should leave you with choice B, okay? And this is actually a case of atrial fibrillation where you have these chaotic atrial firing, no clear P wave activity. Again, you may have this fibrillatory wave, okay? And notice that, uh, that you may have at the baseline. We would call this more fine atrial fibrillation, okay? An irregularly irregular rhythm. Whereas with these junctional idioventricular rhythm, again, no P waves, but they have regular rhythms, okay? And then the thing that's distinguishing them, junctional rhythm, our narrow QRS complex, we forgot the rate, normally between 40 and 60 beats per minute, all right? Uh, and then with the idioventricular rhythm, normal rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute, all right, in that range. Now with, let's look at the rate here, okay, and see what we get. So remember the normal standard ACG from beginning all the way to end is 10 seconds, all right? And we know that 10 seconds times six is 60 seconds, which equals one minute, all right? So one minute, meaning that if you count those QRS complexes going across, multiply by six, we can get an estimate of the rate in beats per minute. So we can get the ventricular rate. So let's do that here. So we can count the QRS complexes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's eight going across. Eight times six is 48, all right? So 48 beats per minute, it's certainly a slow, less than 60 beats per minute, so a slower rate here, okay? It fits in that junctional rhythm range, but again, this is an irregularly irregular rhythm, so that's not correct. Okay, so a rate at 48 beats per minute. So actually we would call this atrial fibrillation with slow ventricular response. Okay, if you wanted the true uh, underlying rhythm. So that's what we would call it. And we call it slow because it's less than 60 beats per minute. Now if the rate is over 100 beats per minute, then we call that a, a rapid ventricular response or RVR, so AFib with RVR, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. If the rate's somewhere between 60 and 100, that's just normal atrial fibrillation. So again, the best choice here of these is atrial fibrillation choice B. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.